Welcome, everybody. We are so glad that you're joining us from your living room or your car or wherever you're at. Um, if you are in your car, please pull over if you're going to watch this. Uh, we don't want to create any other potential dangers for sure. But we're just so glad that you're here today. Um, the only bad part for Scott and Danica and I are since we're like on camera, like in here in the sanctuary, we can't wear our PJ bottoms like you get to. But hope that you enjoy kind of being real casual this morning. I just want to tell you a couple of things in case you've missed them over the course of the week, but we have several small groups that are meeting online. One of them met this morning at 9.30 a.m., and anybody can join that. It's a kind of a co-ed group. If you would like to be a part of that group, and any of these groups for that matter, you need to contact me at roy at busticog.org, and I will, give you, I will send you all the contact information you'll need to be a part of one of those groups. The other uh, times that we have groups are Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. Again, I'll be leading that one, and it's a co-ed for anybody who wants to join that. But Tuesday night, there is one at 6.30 p.m. for young adults. Callie Stevens will be leading that. And, and again, if you want that contact information, contact me, and I'll, I'll get that for you. Wednesday night at 6.30, there is a women's group and a men's group. Um, my wife leads one of those, and, and myself, Matt Hall, and Steve Sorensen lead the men's group. So those are all the small groups that are kind of happening over the course of the week. Again, contact me, Roy, at busticog.org, and I'll get you the contact information. Uh, we're also excited that everyone in the congregation should be getting some care calls, is what we're calling them, from about 20 different families in our church who have committed to doing this. If you're watching this service right now and you're, you're kind of going, well, I didn't get one of those calls, we might not have your most current information in our church database. So again, would you just call the church office at 487-1636? All those calls are being forwarded to my house. Or you can contact me again, and we'll make sure that you get included in on that. Um, this past week, all the reports that we've gotten have been so great. We're really excited about that. And then the, the last thing that I wanted to mention is I'm just so proud of how the church has worked so hard this week to try to bring your tithes and offerings here to the church. Um, really, the response has been so good, and we pray that that will continue. In fact, um, Danica put something together this week that we just want to show you right now that kind of will help you to know the four different ways that you could continue to give while we're in this time of being kind of sequestered in our home. So watch this video, would you? Again, today we're going to add a dimension that we weren't able to do last week, and we're going to offer some music to this service today. And, and it might feel a little bit weird, but I hope that you will just kind of create your own little choir, your ensemble in your living room, or if you're alone, a solo. But would you join us? We're going to put the lyrics up on the screen for you to be able to follow along and sing along with us. So would you join us as we sing um, some songs of praise to our Heavenly Father? Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come, we're gathered together to lift up your name, to call on our Savior, to fall on your grace, hear the joyful sound of our offering, as your saints bow down, as your people sing, we will rise with
in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come. We're gathered together to lift up your name, to call our Savior, to follow your grace. Hear the joyful sound of our offering as the saints bow. we've been at home and just contemplating and thinking about um, just the different things going on. Um, I'm reminded of the scripture in Hebrews 13, 8. It says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And those words have been comforting as, as you think about um, what's going on and just the uncertainty of, of, you know, today and tomorrow and the next day, that he is the same. He is still faithful. He still provides. He still protects. He still heals. You know, he still loves you just as much today as he did yesterday and the day before and the day before that. Actually, the Bible puts it as, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You know, he loves us that much. He's good yesterday, today, and forever. And so as we continue in in worship and song, you know, we're um, looking at this song that's kind of new. It says, God, you're so good. And the chorus, I love it because it's so simple and it's a throwback to um, an older song, but it's just a good reminder of how God has been faithful to us yesterday, today, and he will continue to be. Your power, 
nothing above you, there is nothing beyond you, there is nothing that you can't do. There is no one beside you, there is no one that's like you, there is nothing that you can't do. disguise you and tell you that you fail. Our doubt doesn't daunt you. Our darkness won't defeat you at all. At all. There is nothing above you. There is nothing beyond you. There is nothing that you can't do. If you haven't received our uh, BCOG newsletter that Diana sent out earlier this week, just you might want to grab a pen and a piece of paper and write down who our prayer focus is this week. We have Betty Lou de Blasi, John and Deb Siggins. Our missionary this week is Deborah Honeycutt, serving in Honduras. Our local church we're praying for is Magnolia United Methodist Church. And the local business is Value Hearing Services. This week you might be feeling um, maybe overwhelmed. I know a lot of parents with uh, the children being home and homeschooling might be overwhelming to you Um, and just staying up with life and trying to figure out how things are going to work. But I just want to encourage you today that even in the midst of that, um, as the song that we just sang says, God does not fail us and he is with us in the midst of all of this. 
And when you are feeling overwhelmed and when you feel like you're being stretched beyond what you can be, I just want you to know uh, that's a great time to turn to God and to turn your thoughts toward him, knowing that he is bigger than any battle we've ever faced. And this virus is one of those things that has crippled us as far as what we're normally capable of doing, um, going out and being together with people. And even today, it feels strange being in an empty sanctuary. But God, again, makes a way where there seems to be no way. And for us, um, that way is technology. And, And so for you to be watching us today, and we're still a part of something and we're together. And I just want to encourage you that God is with us in the midst of everything. So would you join me in prayer as we uh, lift up our um, prayer focuses? And again, if you haven't um, received our BCOG newsletter, um, I would encourage you to, to check your email. And if you haven't, contact us and make sure that we have the right email so we can get this to you because it does have prayer requests on there and praises and birthdays, anniversaries, just just things that make us a family and make us cohesive. So would you join me in prayer today? Lord, today we come to you thankful for the opportunity uh, to be together, even virtually, Lord. And we thank you for the people that make this possible even. We thank you for Jared. We thank you for Ben. Uh, we thank you for our sound guys, our technicians, Lord, and, and we just are, are grateful for the gifts that you've given them, that this is even possible because of them. I pray that you'd bless them for that, Lord, and using their talents to honor you and to bring your church together. Lord, as we come before you today, we have our needs and we have um, things that surround us that seem overwhelming. And so, Lord, we do look at those and we realize the reality that we are in, but we also know that you are present in that reality, Lord, that you are with us. And, and Lord, I pray that either with your presence, with your Holy Spirit, or just simply opening our eyes, Lord, we could see your hand move in these situations around us, Lord, that things would work out for the best. Um, Lord, I, I just lift up these prayer focuses to you, Betty Lou. Um, And John and Deb, Lord, their family, Lord, we we lift them up to you and just ask that you would minister to them in a powerful way this week and use them in ways that maybe they aren't expecting to bring hope and to bring encouragement and to bring your love into people's lives. Lord, we thank you for uh, the local churches in this area. Lord, it's been awesome to see them step up even and reach out in ways that maybe they haven't even thought of before uh, this challenge comes along. Lord, and so we ask that you'd be with Magnolia Church as they um, minister in our community throughout this week and even today. Lord, we thank you for the local businesses, Lord, and, and we are so grateful for them because they really push the economy, Lord, and they really help other people in times like this. And so, Lord, we pray that you would provide for value-hearing services, Lord, that that even uh, that business would... would um, just be inspired by different things, uh, maybe reaching new customers that they haven't been able to, or maybe doing business in ways that they haven't. Lord, I just pray that that you would give them wisdom in dealing in this situation like this. And Lord, really, uh, we, we want to lift up all of our local businesses and just ask your blessing on them financially. Lord, giving us um, that desire, Lord, to continue to support them in a time like this, that, that um, Maybe we would go to a bigger um, worldwide company, Lord. I, I just pray that that our focus would be the local economy during this time. Not that the other ones aren't important, but Lord, that, that we would just keep the local man in mind throughout this time. Lord, and again, we just ask your comfort and peace on these families, Lord, that, that are doing things differently this, uh, this season. Lord, that you would give them wisdom. And Lord, again, open our eyes to your hand being... Uh, moving in these situations. Lord, thank you for your faithfulness to us. Thank you for the fact that you are bigger than this COVID-19. Lord, thank you that, that, that you are a healer. And Lord, we lift up those that are infected. And Lord, we pray against that. Lord, and we just ask that you would touch and heal these individuals, protect those that are vulnerable. Lord, we just... We come to you knowing that you're a God that 
that loves us and cares for us. But Lord, we know that we, we live in a fallen world. But Lord, we know that we serve a God that is bigger than that fall, a God of restoration and redemption. And so we lay these things before you today and just ask that you'd speak to us through your word today. In your name, amen. You know, I remember a story that one of my mentors told years ago about an experience that he had with his family as they went um, to Europe on a vacation. And on this one particular day, he took his family hiking to a place where a friend of his had shown him years earlier. They were hiking in a beautiful area of Switzerland when they came upon what appeared to be this kind of cave almost. And, and as my friend was beginning to make his way into this which actually it was a tunnel, but it looked like a cave. As he made it, was making his way into this tunnel, one of his kids called out to him, and, and his son said, hey, Dad, I, I, I'm not going in there. It, it's dark. I mean, it, and, and how, do we, how do we know what we're walking into? Because I, I can't see a light inside of it. So how do we even know there's an opening on the other side? I, I'm afraid to go in there. It, it's not safe. My friend um, turned around, and walked toward his son, and he called his, his wife and his other child um, to him and just kind of put his arms around him, and, and he looked each one of them one by one in the eye, and he said, I, I want to just tell you, this is not a cave. It's a tunnel. And the reason I know that is because I've been in this tunnel before. I, I know it's safe, and I know that there is light on the other side. And with their dad's and husband's reassurance, they all entered into that tunnel and continued on their journey together that day. Well, you know, unlike my mentor and his family, this unprecedented time of uncertainty that we have called the COVID-19 pandemic has thrust us smack dab into what for some of us just feels like this deep, dark cave. And today, I want to tell you that though it may feel like it, it is not a cave, but, but actually it's a tunnel through which God has promised to lead us because he is always present and at work in our lives, and he is always present in our reality. And the fact that God is like Jesus, it gives us a great deal of hope knowing how Jesus led so many others before us in their times of uncertainty. You, you might remember you might not, but way back, it seems like forever ago, on January 12th, I introduced you to the first of seven axioms or truths that reveal who God is and how he has committed to be with us. And so I want to just kind of really quickly review those truths that we've been talking about since January 12th. But I want to begin by just saying to you something very similar to what my mentor said to his family. But since we are already in the tunnel that actually feels like a cave, here's what I want to say to you. Right now, we are in a place where God has already been. And he is committed to leading us to where he has always wanted to take us. I want to say that again. Right now, we are in a place where God has already been, but he wants to take us to where he has always wanted to take us, and he is committed to that. He cares about this situation more than we do. There's a story in the Old Testament about a man who found himself in the midst of very uncertain times, um, and this was in Israel's history. We find the beginning of this story in Judges chapter 6. So if, if you have your Bibles with you, why don't you open them up to Judges chapter 6 and kind of follow along with me. I want to give you a little context up front while you're looking for that. Um, at this time in Israel's history, God allowed Israel to be handed over to their enemy, the Midianites, because they had done evil in God's sight. Now, I, I want to just stop kind of right there because I, I want to tell you that the purpose of this talk is not to make a case that the world is being judged for our unrighteousness in the world today. But actually, the purpose of this message is to show you that God is committed to always be present and at work in our reality. And the way that he goes about that is with the grace, the same kind of grace that Jesus did. So I, I want to show you why I, I'm convinced 
that God cares more about our situation than even we do. So in Judges chapter 6, if you'll, if you'll start with me at, at verse 2, here's what we kind of learn about their situation. It says, The Midianites were so cruel that the Israelites made hiding places for themselves in the mountains, caves, and strongholds. Whenever the Israelites planted their crops, marauders from Midian, Amalek, and the people of the east would attack Israel, camping in the land and destroying crops as far away as Gaza. They left the Israelites with nothing to eat, taking all the sheep, goats, cattle, and donkeys. These enemy hordes, coming with their livestock and tents, were as thick as locusts. They arrived on droves of camels, too numerous to count, and they stayed until the land was stripped bare. So Israel was reduced to starvation by the Midianites. And then the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help. So so when the Israelites were trying to do business as usual, in the midst of this very uncertain time, They were exposed to the enemy and were often captured and pillaged as a result. So because of their fear of losing all that they had owned, not to mention being captured and possibly even being killed, some of the people actually went into hiding. And one of those who chose to go into hiding was a man named Gideon. And even though some might view him as a coward for hiding, even after crying out to the Lord for help, the truth is his fear far outweighed his concern about what other people thought of him. Well, I want you to check out what we read in verse 11 and the following. It says, The angel of the Lord came and sat under the oak in Ophrah that belonged to Joash the Abyssalite, where his son Gideon was wrestling or was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, here's what the angel said, The Lord is is with you, mighty warrior. Now, is that only funny to me? Oh oh yeah, I I guess I can't hear you laugh if you did think it was funny. Um, But but it just seems like it's kind of funny that, that the angel would say, you are a mighty warrior when this guy is cowering, he's hiding from the enemy right now. I mean, what what would you think if the Lord appeared to you while you're hiding from the enemy and, and he calls you a mighty warrior? Doesn't that seem strange? But but it seems like Gideon actually missed that part of the message, but he did catch the other part that said, the Lord is with you. Listen to how he replied to that. But sir, Gideon replied, if the Lord is with us, then why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our fathers told about when they said, did not the Lord bring us out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and put us in the hand of our enemy. Well, these questions that Gideon asked the angel really aren't that different from some of the questions I've heard from people just in the last 10 days. I've heard people asking me very fair questions like, well, do, Roy, do you believe that this pandemic is what's actually going to lead us to the end of the world as we know it and kind of usher us into God's final judgment? And, and, and again, that might seem extreme to some of you, but it's really a fair question. Because when we're facing this kind of uncertainty, the kind that Gideon did and the kind that we're in right now, it's natural to wonder, where is God in all of this? I, I was on a video call with some colleagues this week in which one person made the observation that we as believers don't have the imagination for God's supreme power and authority when God doesn't intercede in the way that we think he ought to. You know, for for Gideon, all he could see was bad news. And and for many of us, it just seems like the bad news just keeps piling on top of other bad news every single day. And what we're desperate for right now is we just want some good news. The angel declared to Gideon in verse 14, Go with the strength you have and rescue Israel from the Midianites. I am sending you. But Lord, Gideon replied, How can I rescue Israel? My clan is the weakest in the whole tribe of Manasseh, and I am the least in my entire family. Have you you noticed that when we're in times of uncertainty like this, It's so easy to rationalize all the reasons why life isn't going to get better. In the story I was telling you earlier about my mentor and his family, 
His child had all kinds of valid reasons why they shouldn't enter into that tunnel. But his dad told him, I'm going with you. And I've been through this tunnel before. This is not new to me. I know the way. Well, notice in verse 16, it doesn't refer to the angel this time. But it says in verse 16, the Lord said to him, I will be with you and you will destroy the enemy as if you were fighting against just one man. But you know what? That still wasn't enough for Gideon because in verse 17, he asked God, would you show me a sign to prove that it's really you? So the angel instructs Gideon to build an altar and then place the meat and the unleavened bread and then pour some broth on top of it. And then the angel walked up to the sacrifice, touched it, and it just took off in flames and was consumed by fire. Kind of like what happened at the Battle of Carmel that we talked about last week. Now, now you would think that that would be enough to convince Gideon, right? Now, he was certainly impressed. He was convinced that the Lord did what he had just witnessed, even to the point of recognizing his unworthiness to have been spoken to God himself. However, when we jump down to verse 34, we are told that the Spirit of the Lord called on Gideon to then lead Israel in a battle against the enemy. And do you know how Gideon responded? Check out verse 36 with me. Then Gideon said to God, well, if you are truly going to use me to rescue Israel as you promised, prove it to me in this way. I will put a wool fleece on the threshing floor tonight, and if the fleece is wet with dew in the morning, but the ground is dry, then I will know that you are going to help me rescue Israel as you have promised. And that's exactly what happened. When Gideon got up early the next morning, he squeezed the fleece and wrung out water, a whole bowl full of water. Okay, now Gideon knows it's God, right? He's then ready to carry out God's instructions to lead Israel against the enemy. Not so fast. Gideon wants God to prove it again. I mean, you gotta admire his chutzpah, right? In verse 39, it says, Then Gideon said to God, please, please don't be angry with me, but let me make one more request. Let me use the fleece for one more test. This time, let the fleece remain dry while the ground around it is wet with dew. So that night, God did as Gideon asked, and the fleece was dry in the morning, but the ground was covered with dew. Evidently, three miracles were finally enough for Gideon because he finally agreed to lead the charge against the enemy as God had instructed him. So when we go to the beginning of Judges 7, it shows that Gideon organized 32,000 men to fight the enemy. But he soon found out that God had some chutzpah to him as well because God says, wait a minute, Gideon, you've got too many men. If, if, if I let you take all those guys into this battle and, and, and when you win, everybody's gonna say, wow, what an impressive army. So I want you to do this. I want, I want to weed out some of these guys. I want you to tell the men if there's any among them that are afraid that they can go home, no consequences. So Gideon does. And 22,000 men left, over two-thirds of the army. Ready to go, right? Wrong. God says, no, 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 no. There's still too many. Um, I want you to take the men down to the spring, and I want you to tell them all to get a drink. And I want you to divide the men into two groups. The first group are the guys that, that, that cup the water in their hands and drink it out of their hands. And then the other group is those who, who bow down and, and actually lap up the water with their tongues like a dog. Well, it says that only 300 men drank the water from their hands. And God says, that's the group. He says, with those 300 men, I will rescue you and give you victory over the Midianites. So send all the others home. So it says in, in verse 8, Gideon sent them home, but he kept the 300 men with him. So Gideon went into battle against the mighty Midianite army with only 300 men. And to make a longer story a little bit shorter, God empowered Gideon and his 300 men to, vict to victory that day. Well, so what does this story have to do with us? Well, we, like my mentor's child and like Gideon, we may legitimately be afraid right now. Whether you're afraid of contracting the COVID-19 virus or afraid that it will claim the life of someone who's particularly vulnerable, or you're afraid that you might lose your job or the company that you work for may go out of business because of the losses they're experiencing right now, or whether you're afraid that, they're, that you're just not enough 
to adapt to all the changes that this situation is requiring of all of us. I have good news. God is present and at work in the midst of COVID-19 and all that that pandemic is affecting. God is present in this reality. God is, is like Jesus and therefore is committed to never leave you or forsake you. And God cares about it more than you do, more than I do. What I'm about to say would be really cheesy if it wasn't true. But because it is true, I can say it with great confidence. Just like a child derives comfort from being held by his or her parents when they're facing uncertainty, so we can find comfort with God through Jesus Christ, who offers to take us in his arms and comfort us. That's what Jesus was doing when he said in Matthew 11, verse 28, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and my burden is light. So wherever you are as you listen to this, if deep down inside you're fighting fear in some way, it's okay. You're, you're not alone. You and many others are up against what seems like just a plethora of bad news these days. But I want you to know the good news is that not only does Jesus care about this more than we do, he cares about you and me more than we do. So you, like Gideon with his outnumbered army, can get up and live today and tomorrow and the next day, knowing that we are not alone. The Lord is with us. Several years ago, the group Casting Crowns recorded a song entitled, Just Be Held. And I want to share with you the first verse and the chorus with you. Here, here's what it says. Hold it all together. Everybody needs you strong. But life hits you out of nowhere and barely leaves you holding on. And when you're tired of fighting, chained by your control, there's freedom in surrender. Lay it down and let it go. So when you're on your knees and answers seem so far away, you're not alone. Stop holding on and just be held. Your world's not falling apart. It's fallen into place. I'm on the throne. Stop holding on and just be held. Just be held. Just be held held. I've asked Danica if she would sing this song for us as we close our time together. So wherever you're at right now, whatever fears are mounting up against you, would you just pull over if you're driving or bow your head if you're in your office or living room and just in your own words, come to Jesus and tell him what your fear is. Ask him to just take you in his arms and give you rest. Let him lead you through this tunnel that we're in right now. I don't know how long we're going to be in it, but the good news I have for you today is that there will be light at the end for those who put their trust in Jesus. So if you've never done that, would you also, in your own words, just surrender yourself and your life to Jesus? Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, I'm just so grateful that you are present in our lives right now. This has not surprised you, this whole pandemic. All, all the craziness, the financial um, downturn that, that our world has experienced, none of this has surprised you. It hasn't changed your ability to care for us, to meet us at the point of our need. So God, today, as we come to you, maybe some of us for the very first time, Lord, as we humble ourselves before you and recognize you know what? By myself, I'm not enough to get through this. I need you. God, would you just open your arms that we can just kind of crawl into your lap and allow you to just hold us? God, thank you for being that kind of father. We pray in your name. Amen. Hold it all together, everybody needs you strong 
Life hits you out of nowhere and barely leaves you holding on. And when you're tired of fighting, chained by your control, there's freedom and surrender. Lay it down and let it go. So when you're on your knees and answers seem so far away, you're not alone. Stop holding on and just be held. Your world's not falling apart, it's falling into place. I'm on the throne, stop holding on and just be held. Just be held. Just be held. If your eyes are on the storm, you'll wonder if I love you still. But if your eyes are on the cross, you know I always have and I always will. And not a tear is wasted, in time you'll understand. I'm painting beauty with the ashes, your life is in my hands. So when you're on your knees and answers seem so far away, you're not alone, stop holding on and just be held. Your world's not falling apart, it's falling into place. I'm on the throne, stop holding on and just be held. Just be held. Just be held. And lift your hands, lift your eyes. In the storm is where you'll find me. We just thank you for our time that we have together to be encouraged by your word and just take confidence in each and every day, knowing that we can trust you, Lord, for your provision, your protection, your healing, your strength, Lord, your joy, that we can take comfort and peace and find rest in your presence. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Stay well and stay safe.